everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Uh, in the last episode, we basically set up all of our structure and our E numbers, enumerations, um, and all we've got left to do now is basically set up our data tables. And this is the kind of easier part because we're just going to take them from the structs. So the first thing we're going to want to do is create one from our basic information. So if we uh, if we right click and go to, I think it's miscellaneous. Yep. And there's a data table. We click on the drop down and we're just going to create it from our basic information struct. Click OK. And we'll call this data table. Uh, we'll call it um, Pokemon Basic Info DT. The next one we're going to want to create is our move data table which comes directly from our move struct so again into miscellaneous click on data table click on the drop down and we're going to look for that move struct click ok and this becomes our pokemon move dt finally the last one we're going to need is going to be our typing multiplier which is going to come from again miscellaneous data table and that comes from our where is it typing multiplier click OK and we'll call this uh, we'll just call it typing multiplier DT trying to keep all the naming conventions the same as well just so it all makes a little bit more sense and what you'll see is uh, if you open up our basic information we can add one and we've got all this lovely information we can fill in so, for example, if I was going to set up Bulbasaur, I'd say it's to 1. Uh, this needs to be changed. That'll be updated. Don't worry. Uh, we'll call it Bulbasaur. Uh, we'll, I can't remember what all the species information was. I know it's a grass. Uh, I didn't do a none. I should have done a none in there, but that's fine. Uh, I don't know what its weight and height information is. Um, I did get some sprites, but I don't think I've imported them yet. But you'll, you'll hopefully have all this information set up already. Uh, we can get its evolution information if we go... Do the drop down we can say okay it's um a condition uh the name of the evolution is ivysaur evolution level is like 15 as an example it doesn't need to have happiness uh it doesn't need to have anything else so we can literally just do it from that can't remember what its base experience or its catch rate is either i think the catch rate is uh 45 actually off the top of my head and uh we will need to get its base that information but the reason I'm showing you this now is because you can set this up very quickly. If you have all this information, you, you should be able to just do it from a quick Google, um, get the Pokedex or whatever up for the on Google and literally fill most of this information in. Uh, they should have all the base stats as well. Like This can automatically go to one and one uh, and you should be able to get its move list as well. We'll be doing all of this when we get to setting up the creatures, but um, for now I'm just showing you what's in here and how you would do it. Do not forget to change the row name, and this is where that con the, the sensitive context uh, takes into consideration. You must have this row name named exactly how you want your creature to be named. If it's not, it will have issues. You are going to find you have issues trying to get um, what you need. And I've just realized I've named it wrong. Bulbasaur, there we go. <laughs> there you go, there you go. I'm already doing it. I'm terrible. Um, yeah, so you need to make sure that it has the exact name of what it's called, its normal name, not its given name. If you use your given name, you'll never find anything ever. So the given name is purely just for when you send your creature out or you have your creature in your um, inventory uh, or your Pokedex or whatever, your ring decks, whatever it's called, I don't know. It's just so you see that's your name. That's what you've called it. It gives it some personality. It has no effect on finding any information or evol evolutions and stuff. It won't work. So just make sure you give that the name of the actual creature. Um, and when we plug it in, don't use the given name either. Uh, the Pokemon moves, this is literally just going to be for you to set up moves. So, for example, if I want to set up tackle, um, that's tackle. Oh, no, it's not. Now it is. Again, row name also needs to be the same tackle. Description, uh, a Pokemon tackles. That's, you know, whatever. Uh, and it's going to be a type normal. And we're going to also set that up to be normal as well. It's a physical attack. No move accuracy. Uh, oh, those aren't set up to correctly. That's not good. 
let's go into our move strap. I must not change them from um I must not change them from booleans. I did not. There we go. So those should be uh integers. There we go. That's better. Save. And if you save this, it should then update. So the power of um the accuracy of tackle is like 95 and I think the power is like 40. There's no stat effects on this one, um, but as you can see now in this, this is why I did this, is so that we can literally just come along and change this if we need to with no hassle. So that's why I've done that for the debuff. So if it is a stat up or a stat down move, we can literally do that pretty easily. Um, the reason I split these as well, by the way, I just realized why I split these is because um, we can tick them true if it's going to affect the player and we can tick it true if it's going to affect the enemy and then that way if it's not true it'll just bypass and save a little bit of messing around that's why i did that uh and then it does affect you can then literally just say okay it, it has bought it burns and it has a chance of a 25 percent well this will do a one in 20 so if you do it to like 20 no it doesn't sorry the way i do it it does it out of 100 so if i do it to 25 it's got a one in four chance of hitting if I do it to 100, it will burn every time. If I do it to 1, it's got a 1 in 100 chance of burning, right? That's how I did mine. And, um, yeah, and then max multi-move, if I do it 5, it's going to hit 5 times. So, hopefully, by doing all of this, um, it should speed up you creating moves. Now we've done, this is the hard part. Now we can just add them in and just fill out the information, and it should go a little bit quicker when you come to do that as well. And we'll be doing that soon as well when we set up the creatures. And the multiplier is probably the most annoying one to set up. Only reason being is that um, we have to do this for every single one. So, for example, if the first one is grass, we know that grass is one. If we, oh, can I add a new key to the map? Well, the key, the default value exists. Oh, oh it's because I didn't do, do a none. That's why. So we'd have to do fire, water. Grass will be the last one you basically do. And then you do all to one. Um, but I'm going to do all of them for now. Just for this one. Uh, we've got wind. We've got bug. And we've got normal. And we've now got grass. So there we go. Easy peasy. And um, we could have, we probably could have done the defaults for this one actually as well. In, uh, in the strut. And saved ourselves a little bit of time. So we know that grass is super effective against water, but it's super bad against fire. So 0 0.5. Wind's probably normal. It probably has a small boost against bug, nothing against normal, and it's equal against grass as well. Then you would just add the next one in and say, okay, this is fire. Add in grass. Uh, and then, oh, you... Yeah, okay. It's going to have to be the same again. This is where it gets annoying. This is why I should have added a none. Don't do what I did. Add a none, a none in or something. Maybe I should do that now. Um, into the... Where is it? Pokemon type. We add a new one in. We'll put this at the top so that it doesn't get as annoying. And we'll call this none and save it. Save that one. And... We should now be able to do none. Yeah, 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 yeah. So bug, normal, grass, fire, water, grass, fire, water, wind, bug, normal, grass, fire, water. Uh, it's kind of weirdly done it automatically for me. That's interesting. I don't know why it's done that. Strange. Okay, uh, and then change that one to none and. Again, for fire, we know they're going to do two times damage against water. They're going to do the same to fire, uh, to grass, sorry. Grass, fire, water, wind, it's going to do one. Bug, it's going to do two times. And normal, it's going to do probably one. Going to do, have to redo this one. So grass is one. Fire is 0 0.5. Water is two. Wind is one. Bug is probably 1.5. And then normal is thing. You can get the proper um damage table up on google again it's a quick google search i'm just doing what i think off the top of my head but again you should be able to find that out pretty quickly and you would set one of these up for every single one uh do grass fire water every single one so if there's like 17 types you need to set up one for every every type so that we can know what the damage multiplier is when we come to attack so that's that setup so that's 
basically all the information we need for the creatures and what we're going to be using going forward. If there's anything added, obviously I will do it on the video. We won't be glossing over anything. We're going to be doing this all from scratch. Bear that in mind. Um, the only other thing we will set up in here is the selected ringmon information and the encounter information. That will come when we start to do coding. So the first thing we're going to do in this episode, the last thing we're going to do in this episode, whichever one you want to call it, uh, is we are going to be going into our third person character now. Come on. And um, going into here. And we're going to go into our blueprints. And we're going to set up a few things. The first thing we're going to do is set up a strut called uh, F ring uh, Pokedex. That's the first one we're going to add. The next one we're going to add is um, trainer info. Uh, we also want to add one in for trainer ringmon. Uh, Pokemon, sorry, Pokemon. I'm going to be doing that a lot. I'm sorry, guys. I do apologize in advance. And then we want F Trainer Storage Box. Save everything so that we don't lose anything by accident. So we're going to do this, all four of these as well, hopefully this episode. And um, that should be all of the information that we need set up. Uh, and then we can start coding some stuff, which will be really exciting. Really, really exciting. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to open up this F trainer storage box. And we're going to set this to uh, F Pokemon party info. And we're going to set this to an array. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in however many we want to be in our storage box. In this example, we've got 20. I think the original Pokemon has 30. So let's go up to 29. 29. The reason we go to 29 is because we already have index 0. So that's our 30th there. And we can save this. And that's all we need to do in here. We don't need to do anything else. The next thing we want to do is we want to open up our trainer Pokemon. And we're going to have all of our storage creatures on us. This is why Pokemon do it this way now. is because they already carry it on them. It makes so much more sense to do it this way. And we're going to have our party, which is going to be, again, F uh, poke party info. That's going to also be an array. And then we're going to have our storage boxes. storage boxes and we're going to um, train a storage box there we go and then we'll make that an array and we already know that um, in here we need to add six so we have our party of six and in this one I believe you always have I, I don't know how many boxes you have to be honest uh, I'm gonna call it ten I might be wrong. Someone tell me if it's wrong. I've done 11. I'll do 15. 15. Okay, so we've got 15 storage boxes there. I don't know if that's the right amount. <laughs> I'm not sure. But um, that's how many we're going for. That's like at least 450 Pokemon that you can store in there. And we're never even going to go that far, so I don't think it's going to matter too much. But I found doing it this way really changes the ability like i think some people were having issues with my storage boxes before and um i find doing it this way is just far better so hopefully hopefully this works a lot better for everyone else too in the trainer information we for now i've, I've not got too much in here for now uh this will obviously increase when we add in badges and god knows what else but uh, the main things I was worried about for the multiplayer was the trainer ID, which is a uh, integer, and the uh, trainer name, which is a uh, type string. And then we have the uh, poker decks going into here as well. Poker decks save, and 
eventually there will be a ton of other information like money amounts and all that sort of stuff will go into there but for now we're just going to keep it simple on that side of things because a lot of that will have to be ran through on the kind of online system the next thing we want to work on is the uh ring decks um i want i might need to go back into the other thing for a second because there's one thing i didn't do um but we'll we'll go back uh so we're gonna do pokemon pokemon index so we need to know its index number and we need to get its uh pokemon name that is the actual name not the given name and then we need a port question mark boolean and we're going to change that to an integer and we're going to change this one to a name value save that that's done if I go back into our trainer information, I just need to set that to an array save. And I will just double check that I did do that as an array. I'm pretty sure I did. I did. That's great. Uh, okay, fantastic. And that is all the stuff we need to set up. Um, the only things that will go back into this blueprint is the inventory stuff and the battle proxy stuff. But we'll cover those in future episodes. I don't want to make this too much kind of like uh, informational heavy. Otherwise, um, you know, we'll have like five episodes of setting everything up and then no code. <laughs> We've already, we're already on three episodes. We've done an hour of just setting up structs and information, but this is all important. So just remember that, that this is, is important. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start doing our, um, we're going to set up the, uh, Pokemon starter. Oh, I can't use a space. So that's fine. Pokemon starter. That's what we're going to be doing next. Picking our Pokemon starter. Uh, so that we can um, get a star, star uh, creature in our game. And um, then we're going to set up like um, the encounter stuff and we'll set up like a battle area and all that sort of stuff. Hopefully you're still finding this useful. Uh, hopefully you've noticed already some of the changes I've made and hopefully you're kind of understanding why I made those changes. Um, for example, like with the party and the storage boxes being together and also things like someone holding the information in data tables as opposed to actually on the creature. Hopefully this all makes sense. But um, if it doesn't, please give me a shout in the Discord. If you're a member, you can enter in the members section and ask me personally there. I try and answer those questions first. And then obviously if you're watching this down the line, don't feel afraid to put it in the help section in the Discord. I'm usually in there trying my hardest to help people. So uh, I'm more than welcome. I'm more than happy to help you too. But thanks so much guys for watching. And I will see you in the next episode. Much love. Take care. Bye.